uh, which is Mr. Pat Martins, uh, retired in 2014 with over 30 years of experience from the Missouri Department of Transportation. And working now as an independent consultant, Mr. Martin provides uh, preservation expertise uh, with regard to bridge decks. Morning, everybody. I know some of you uh, out there have uh, had a chance to see hydro demolition equipment in operation out there in the field. Um, if you haven't, uh, it's a pretty uh, interesting uh, process that we can use now to effectively remove concrete. And in particular, we can use it now for a bridge deck rehabilitation. Uh, pretty, pretty good process to do that. What I want to talk about today with my presentation is uh, kind of take you through the last 20 years of uh, hydro demolition development in Missouri and how that uh, program has uh, kind of slowly uh, uh, evolved uh, within the state of Missouri. So my outline, I'm going to talk a little bit about just hydro demolition in general. Uh, then I'll take you into uh, just where this process started for us as an agency. Um, some of the Missouri installations that we have out there, a few major projects, uh, specifications, how those have kind of evolved over, over the years since we started the process. And then we'll uh, talk a little bit about the early strength mix also. So if, if you haven't uh, seen hydro demolition equipment, this would be the robot that would actually be doing the kind of the dirty work out there as far as uh, removing the concrete uh, on, the, on the bridge deck. Mostly these are bridge deck applications that we're using uh, hydro demolition on nowadays. You can use it in a variety of applications, but uh, bridge deck restoration type processes is probably the by far uh, the, uh, the main method uh, that we're using the equipment for. Um, if you had a chance, hopefully you had a chance to get out to the demo yesterday, you had an excellent opportunity. Hydro Technologies had a robot on site that you could look at and we did, there was a demonstration that was performed, a couple different demonstrations before we had the weather kind of kick in on us there, but you had a good opportunity to look at that the equipment and see uh, just the movements and how that, uh, that works out there. So when we talk about hydro demolition, you probably think, okay, concrete removal, that's what we really can use uh, hydro demolition for, and it's excellent for that process, deteriorated or sound concrete, you can remove concrete to really about any depth that you need to. But maybe just as important is the ability of surface preparation that we get out of hydro demolition, and that's where we really can take advantage of that with uh, what we call fast track hydro demolition out on bridge deck surfaces. And fast track hydro demolition is essentially when we calibrate the, the water jet and we want to take out de deteriorated or weakened concrete in just a single pass of the, uh, the jet moving across the deck surface. And that's going to go across every square inch of that top surface of the bridge deck. It's doing this in a variety of means. Uh, first of all, the, the sheer pressure that we're getting out of the units, uh, minimum 14, 15,000 PSI generally, you're going to have just direct impact that you're going to be able to break up and uh, deter, uh, uh, demolish that uh, concrete. Pressurization with the, uh, the, the high pressure and the amount of water that we're using, any micro fracturing in the top part of that deck is being uh, filled up and pressurized and busted out, so we're not going to leave any delaminations in, in the deck with the, the process. And then the, the sheer volume of water, some of these uh, units can use upwards of 65, 70 gallons a minute of water coming through that robot, and that in itself creates a rapid erosion type process uh, where we're, we're kind of washing out those fines uh, in between the coarse aggregates and getting some good peaks and valleys, which gives us a very good uh, etched and roughened surface that's very bondable for a, a concrete overlay. So this would be a look at, um, in, in the foreground here, you would see an area that has a, a total surface treatment, a fast track type application. You can see the very rough and bondable surface. In the background, you see the milled surface. Generally with these processes, you want to mill to open up the surface to get the jets engaged faster. And uh, you can see in the background the milled surface. So you can get an idea of the different, difference in the, uh, the profile that you get out of the surface. You, in, with that hydro surface, you have so much more bondable surface area, upwards of 300% or more uh, bondable surface area with your um, hydro surface. Now, Missouri, we're the show-me state. Generally what that means is we wait for 49 other states to, to take the lead and do some things before Missouri will say, okay, this is a process we want to embrace. In this case, um, though, with hydro demolition, we did 
get into this process a little earlier, so maybe now we're just the slow me state as opposed to the, to the show me state. But uh, we started out uh, with our first project out in uh, Franklin County, Missouri in 1996. And this was uh, out on a bridge called St. Mary's Way. And truthfully, it probably was, should have been a deck replacement. It was a pretty rough deck, but we tried the process out there. And uh, that became the first installation of a, of a hydro demolition surface with a, with a new overlay system on it, total surface. From there, we had uh, another project uh, the following year in, a, in the general, same general area, same treatment, a little better deck condition this time, though, that uh, was helpful. There was also a variety of maintenance type projects that we did uh, involving just general deck patching because we had a, a serious problem in the St. Louis area with uh, deck issues. Um, most of the bridges along Interstate 70 from downtown out to the airport were pretty much falling apart and it was just overwhelming for our crews to handle so we were looking for ways to expedite that process. Um, this became a method that we could uh, knock out uh, uh, large amounts of material and generally go from what might take 60, 70 working days down to 20 or less working days of uh, actual uh, removal and uh, repair. The first program job we did though through our state uh, right away in construction program was in 1998 out in Springfield, Missouri in the southwest part of the state. And then there was also, in, in the meantime, research was involved with us also in, uh, in these projects, kind of evaluating the process just to see uh, uh, you know, what we could get out of this. And this is the uh, a report that research put out. And it uh, basically came to the conclusion that yes, this is a very viable uh, process. We need to be looking at this as a state. Uh, we stand to uh, gain, um, as far as uh, cost benefit, contractors and the agency could benefit from this. And this was a 2002 report. And you can find this out on Missouri's uh, website if you, if you want to go out there and, and take a look at that. So it's, it's a fairly old report from 2002, but this was kind of the backbone of where everything started for us in Missouri. So this is uh, that first deck. I did have some old footage of the uh, bridge deck. And you can kind of get a gauge of uh, kind of the condition of that thing. That first uh, pass is on the left side there. And there's an extensive amount of reinforcing steel that's uh, exposed there. I do have a little video I was even able to pull out of the archives here. So this would have been from that 90, 1996 uh, installation that we did out there. And uh, you can kind of see, you know, the footage is kind of interesting to look at and you can see the safety issues and things are a little bit different probably now than they were back then. So it's a little bit, uh, a little bit funny to kind of look at, at some of that old 20 uh, year old video to, to see that. And you can see kind of the speed of the robot, how it's working. So I thought that was kind of fun to pull that uh, old video out. You could kind of see uh, how, that, uh, how that works there. So I'm gonna talk about a little bit of, of of the uh, Missouri installations that we have. Overall, I mean, Missouri, yes, we jumped into the, into the process in the, uh, the, the 1996 range. Uh, it took a little while to, to catch on, and it's not like Missouri is a forerunner in this technology. There's other states out there that have been well ahead of Missouri, and the nice thing about that is we've been able to basically uh, kind of piggyback onto some of the things they've learned out there. So that's, that's an important thing for other agencies. If you haven't been involved in the process yet, take advantage of, of your, uh, your partners out there and uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So this is a look at uh, the amount of work uh, that's been done as best as I could gauge it, kind of working with the bridge office to determine how many uh, hydro demolition type prep uh, surfaces we have out there. St. Louis far and away has the uh, the most installations. Square yardage wise, we're looking at uh, you know a little over 350,000 minimum. Don't have the exact numbers, but this is probably a fairly decent estimate of those numbers based on uh, district breakdown. Again, St. Louis with a kind of the leader in that. And latex concrete, I wanted to throw in here. This is. Uh, if any of you are familiar with the old Seinfeld series, it's one of my favorite series out there on TV. But uh, 
Remember George Costanza, he was a big proponent for latex concrete. Well, or latex in general, I should say, not necessarily concrete. But I always get a kick out of, uh, when I think latex, I'm thinking George Costanza and his efforts to be a, a latex salesman to kind of uh, trick the uh, unemployment agency. So it doesn't have anything to do with my presentation, but I just kind of like the, uh, the, the slide there and the, the tie-in and the twist with uh, latex. Uh, so anyway, Missouri generally does use latex concrete overlays in their systems. Uh, early on, we did experiment with a few other systems out there, but we found that the, uh, the latex system really uh, give us, gives us the best bang for our buck. We expect to get a good 25, 30 year system out there on these installations. Probably just trying to estimate over 300,000 square yards. Again, I know there's other states out there that are way ahead of us, um, you know, Ohio, uh, North Carolina, Pennsylvania have been in this longer than us. They've got probably over a million square yards of uh, overlays uh, out there. Uh, this is uh, some information that Scott Stottlemyer provided for me from uh, Missouri, um, and I found it kind of interesting. A uh, little deterioration curve uh, based on uh, latex modified concrete overlays, and uh, you can kind of gauge deck condition on that left side versus um, the service years. And you can kind of see a little cluster out there past that 20 year range. Um, so we, you know, there's overlays out there, latex concretes that are well over, uh, or right in that 30 year range, plus or minus, still out there performing for uh, the state. I know of one out there that's uh, right in the 40 year range, it still looks good, I see it uh, quite often. And then you got that cluster to the left of the 20 year range, those are Probably mainly hydro demolition surface preps. Those one to the to the right side there are going to be on milled surfaces because because we didn't uh, have uh, hydro demolition installations there. But you can kind of see uh, we're kind of it's going to be interesting to kind of track to see how that hydro demolition uh, service uh, how much more life we get out of the the structures there. So some of the uh, the more notable installations are some of the early ones. I'll just kind of touch on real briefly here. I've already mentioned about the St. Mary's job. Um, the 44 job was the one in southwest Missouri. 141, um, that was uh, one of the first, that would have been the first program job probably in the St. Louis district. And then there's also some rural applications out on uh, US 65 in Grundy County. And then there's a few other installations I've noted there in Jefferson and in the Kansas City and Central Missouri area. So this is just some footage of that St. Mary's job where they were putting the, the overlay on. And I, the nice thing is, uh, living in Missouri, I'm, I'm able to get around and keep tabs on all the jobs that we've let out there and through the years. So I do visit a lot of the job sites frequently just to look at performance to see how all those uh, overlay systems are working. And this is the, uh, the St. Mary's job. I just looked at that last year, and I believe they're getting ready to replace that bridge. But this was, uh, you can see there's a lot of cracks on there. This one had a, um, an experimental overlay installed with it when we did the hydro, so it's not uh, one of our conventional overlay systems. But it is uh, uh, hanging in there. It does have a fair amount of delaminations in it, and like I said, it is getting replaced this year. But it had an extensive deterioration. And r really, uh, when you think about it, 20 years of life out of that thing on the condition that it was in. It was probably an NBI 3 deck rating, I would guess, when we did it. So it was pretty rough. Uh, to get 20 years out of that, I think, is pretty good. And it just goes to speak that if you do it on a better condition deck, you're probably going to see much better performance results. And even this one is hanging in there, just got some minimal uh, uh, deterioration or minimal uh, patching and spalling on it anyway, mainly at the joints. The, this uh, Southwest uh, Missouri job, I don't uh, have a lot of information on the installation as far as what the condition of that deck was. We do know we've got some patches out there. Uh, we've got about 13% in this one span. The other direction, we've got about six in this other span. Um, so that there is some deterioration associated with this one. Again, a 20-year installation, but it's, it's holding up fairly well for the 20 years that it's been in. Just a quick note here. Uh, Looking underneath, if any of your old bridge inspectors, you know, you, you can tell a lot about what's going on with your system on top if you look underneath and see what's going on on the bottom side of that bridge. Here you can see in the, the center bay, you can see some of that white uh, uh, kind of saturation I'd call in there. Probably a good chance, you know, this was put in in stages. You got a joint there, that's an avenue for water to get in. So just like any other tr treatment you might have out there, you do have to do some general maintenance on occasion, if, if necessary, you know, to kind of keep water from getting down 
uh, into that overlay on, or underneath it or you know, down into the, uh, the deck under, under the overlay system there. This 141 installation was interesting in that uh, it was built in the mid-70s with a um, latex mortar system and that was applied in the uh, original construction phase and um, testing done on it in the late 90s showed there was a lot of high chloride content in the overlay which is good that's what you want you want the overlay to take the uh, the chlorides and protect your deck the deck was still protected well they stripped the overlay system off and put on a new latex concrete overlay looking real good it's been out there since 2001 time period the only thing I've really noticed on this is some patches around the, uh, the end of the, the bridge, the, the deck end there near, near the approach joint, and quite probable it's uh, impact damage and the effects of moisture getting down in the joint because you've got kind of an open type joint system right there at the end of the bridge. So again, you gotta, you got to kind of maintain uh, those joints and keep water from getting down in there. But overall, looking at the surface, very little cracking, looks good. It's been uh, performing very well. I would expect it's probably gonna be out there another 10, 15 years easily, putting it well over the 30 years of, uh, of service life for us. This is one, and just to show you, we don't always do them in the urban area. This is an, a rural route out there in uh, northern Missouri up near the Iowa line. And again, been out there since 2002, looks good. This Jefferson County installation was back in uh, 2007 and wanted to point out on this one, Missouri, uh, we used to collect uh, chlorides and do some electrical testing on the bridges, uh, delamination surveys. You know, we had a deck testing crew that did this type of uh, thing prior to the jobs. These Jefferson County jobs, we had bridges uh, a little bit over the threshold for what we'd like to see in chloride contents, up around 2.7 uh, pounds per, per cubic yard there. Um, and we've fast track hydroed it, installed it, no ill effects from any of, of the chloride uh, content in that deck. Uh, minimal cracking that I could observe. Looks like they had done a little bit of sealing work. If you looked, you could see kind of that black material around there. Looks like they had uh, applied a little bit of sealer, but uh, fairly fine cracking, no, uh, no uh, deterioration at all to speak of really with the, with the overlay systems. Same here, you just got a few random cracks that I've kind of highlighted with the, the keys there. This Jackson County installation is out in our Kansas City area, installed in 2011. These decks had even higher chloride contents in them, up over the 4% range. But when I was out there last time and looked at them earlier in the year, they still looked pretty good, didn't see any uh, noticeable uh, problems with those. The, the one installation out in that area even had some full depth issues that they handled during the uh, uh, construction phase. So just because you do have some full depth issues there doesn't mean you can't hydro, you can still do conventional full depth patching and then apply your overlay and get a good uh, seal over, over that uh, original deck system. This is, the, uh, this is a central Missouri installation, big job out in uh, west, uh, west of Jeff City. A few major projects have been included in these. They're not just basic uh, uh, structures. We've got some long uh, viaduct type structures in downtown St. Louis, up over 50,000 square yards of uh, hydro and uh, latex on these structures. And we also have some lake bridges out in uh, central Missouri that are uh, pretty good size, have a lot of uh, premature delamination due to having high steel in the surface of the, of the bridge deck. This is a look at uh, that Poplar Street structure in downtown St. Louis on the west end. And this one here is really more preservation. It, you know, you can use the process to remove concrete, to uh, kind of rehab uh, your structure when you have deterioration in it, but you can also use it as a preservation a method also. This deck here on the west side, we had very little uh, uh, spalling or delamination in it, but it's a good time to go ahead and get this treatment on and get a good life out of it, and it's an area we really don't want to let it get away from us where it's going to cause a, a more extensive lane closure, having to replace those uh, uh, deck spans in there. This is one of the lake bridges that had the high steel in it, and um, 
hydroed and, and overlaid. Looks like they've done a little bit of sealing work on uh, some of this. Walked this one here not too long ago too, and it looked pretty good. I probably, of the uh, 150 plus that we have out there, I'd say I've probably looked at uh, probably 40% of them here in the last two years, as far as just my own personal review of those, uh, those uh, surfaces. So our specifications in Missouri, you know, as you, as you do these projects, things, uh, you, you kind of pick up on things, you kind of tweak your specs and try to improve things. One, a couple of things that we, we noticed uh, in the development of uh, the projects in Missouri. First of all, when we first went into hydro demolition, it was really a process to enhance our deck repair uh, and, and kind of expedite that. What we found out though was early on, we were doing all, still doing a lot of jackhammering behind a hydro demolition. We had rebar exposed. And uh, what we found out, and especially kind of working with other states is, and working with the latex concrete, um, we could waive that, clear, that clearance requirement on our specifications. So that really helped us to get the hammers off the bridge. We were getting good installations with latex concrete, and we, were, we weren't uh, worrying about uh, that rebar clearance. The, the latex itself was giving us a good chemical bond with the surface, plus we had great mechanical bond from the hydro demolition. And the latex industry endorses this as far as uh, rehabilitation. The, uh, Payment for monolithic repair, early on uh, there was a pay item in our specs that uh, you know, we have a general overlay depth and with hydro demolition you're going to have a lot of material that comes out of the deck that's going to be, be beyond that overlay. You're going to have additional material to pour back in there. Well, early on we would allow the contractor to bid that and the prices would be really high there. Uh, I remember seeing some that were up around $2,000, you know, per cubic uh, yard of material. And we found out, no, that's, that's not really correct. And again, working with other states, seeing what they were doing, we found out we can go in and just put a price in and basically pay that as a, uh, basically a material force account overrun, basically. So that really helped out. We could put that uh, dummy price right in the, in the contract and just pay for the material cost only. Zoned repairs, we do those in uh, Missouri on, what I'm talking about there is where you have continuous concrete construction of your superstructure. We require zoning over uh, the negative moment regions. And that kind of presents some issues with the fast track process because you need to complete all these zones first. So what Missouri's been doing on some of these types of structures is going in and just going ahead and doing conventional sounding and patching in those negative moment areas. And then they're going in and as the last method, they're going in and doing a, a total surface uh, a hydro prep so that they can get that prep uh, at the as the final uh, uh, method of prep for their uh, overlay installation. And then deck testing of chlorides, I already mentioned, we, we, we used to do that in Missouri for a long time. About uh, probably eight or nine years ago, I, I'd suppose that uh, kind of changed with some, some structuring of uh, various departments in MoDOT. So they no longer do that, but they do get involved with uh, GPR now. They have a uh, on-call contract for GPR, IR, and some other uh, uh, deck testing investigation that uh, they can uh, kind of farm out if they need to. And then removal of pre-existing patches. One thing you find uh, when you have patches out there is a lot of times those are a different density than your original bridge deck that you're calibrating to, and that can lead to those patches maybe not getting yanked out, so they have a, a pay item in there now that allows the contractor to go in and uh, pop those out prior to the hydro demolition. That way we they can go through, get that all cleaned up, and then get the uh, uh, good surface prep that they want under that patch area. This is a, I just wanted to throw this in here because I thought this was an interesting scan that uh, MoDOT had on uh, some a bridge deck that they were hydroing and they ran some GPR and you can kind of get a good correlation of the GPR versus the where the uh, concrete removals are. Actually lined up pretty good in this particular uh, scan that they did. I don't know that's always the case. I think they've had some issues on some of that but that's kind of a different topic to, to look at. But uh, Kind of neat, if you can, especially if you can get this technology to work for you, it really can give you a good handle on what you have out there uh, going into the project uh, beforehand. Very early strength latex mix. Um, 
Got quite a few uh, of these out there, probably about 20 of them. And uh, again, the Poplar Street area is where we started this back in the 2004-05 range. And this is just a look at that intersection there, all that white blotches there. That's where we have the, uh, the, the uh, hydro and dense overlay in that area. But looking pretty good. The, uh, th this is the west end of the, uh, the Poplar Street approach. Cra there are some cracks out in there. I can see some visible cracks out there, very tight. And again, another installation out in the Lindbergh area. Um, so just wanted to point that out real quick, that very early strength latex mix mixes are really becoming popular, especially in those urban areas uh, where you need to get in, you need to get out. These projects generally were going in on like a Friday night, having them open to traffic by Monday morning rush hour works really good in, in urban areas or interstates or where you have high density. So kind of summarizing, I just wanted to tell you, you know, fast track hydro, it's the, that's the preferred treatment out there really. You can really knock out a lot of, uh, of deck area out there in a short period of time. It, it's a great method for asset management. There's a, it's a good tool for the toolbox out there. It's been valuable to Missouri, I think, uh, in the long run. Uh, we're seeing more and more of that process being used. Um, these installations have been out there over 20 years and I'm not really finding any issues on, on any of these installations we've done out there. The, con the specs will continue to uh, evolve as we go along, but they're doing a pretty good job of uh, tying those down and take advantage of the, the early strength mix where you can. And then I really think every agency should have this in their toolbox. It's not for every bridge, but it's a good uh, tool to have in the toolbox there. So. And then finally, the last slide, I uh, just wanted to, our poor George here, he just can't buy a break. He wants to be the latex salesman, but uh, Kramer ratted him out, so. Uh, uh, you expressed the need to rotomill the surface to clean it, open up the pore structure and any cracks. Um, do you believe that a, a shot blast treatment would be sufficient, or do you need to be a little more aggressive with that rotomill? No, I think you really need to be aggressive, and not only to open up the surface, but also if you have deteriorated concrete, you want to mill as much of it out as you can. If you know you have a lot of deterioration, go ahead and mill as much as you can out first with the, the milling. That's going to be cheaper and faster, and then just use that last half inch to hydro to get your surface prep. That's what you really need the hydro for last, is to get that prep for you. Is it this process uh, would apply for just uh, total bridge closure, or you can use for the lane closure on the main process? I didn't quite understand that. He's asking about for a total, either a total, a total, lane, total width of the bridge, or only can you do this only for a single lane oh, at okay. a time? As or? far as like stage construction? Right. Yeah, you could go in and, and do stage construction, just lane at a time, or whatever width you need to, to work on, yeah, and then work across the bridge that way, yes. Right, the traffic will, you can, you can maintain traffic uh, adjacent to the work zone, yes. Okay. Uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.